Hey, good afternoon, and uh, welcome to my wife's kitchen. It's a, it's a very good thing she's not here at the moment because she hates it when I do these things in our kitchen. But she's not here, so let's get started. Uh, what I'd like to do this morning, uh, or this afternoon rather, is just kind of do a real quick review on this uh, reliable electric pure sine wave inverter. It's a 1500 watt, runs on 12 volts. I've had this thing for about four years, and I liked it so much, I, I later bought another one, and then I bought a, a third one, which is a 3000 watt. So I have three of these things. Uh, so what I'd like to do is just real quickly show you around the front panel and the back panel. Then I'm going to uh, hook up an O-scope so you can see the waveform. Uh, we'll check the voltages. And then I'll open it up and kind of show you why I like this particular thing. Uh, in addition to the way it's been operating, uh, how it's built and why I think it's reliable as it is. Additionally, I'll just point out that I had this thing for about six months when this little display up in the front went out. And uh, I called up Reliable Electric, or actually emailed them. And uh, they sent me another one, no questions asked. I, it was easy enough to put in. Um, in any case, uh, that's the only problem I've had with it. The other two have been flawless. Uh, in any case, on the front panel, you have, uh, you'll see these when I power it up later, but you have a fault light, a power light, your 12 volt in light, your AC light uh, that's coming out, two 15 amp, 110 volt AC jacks on the front, your main power on and off. I put that label on because I like to label things. Turn this thing around the back. You've got uh, two fans that draw air from the front to the back across some heat sinks. There's a thermistor in there that will cycle those on and off as needed. And you got two heavy posts in the back where you hook up your AC, or excuse me, your DC input. I would recommend this thing be mounted as close to your battery as possible and keep these cables short. Uh, when you're on a full load, you're drawing quite a, quite a few amps through there. Uh, 1,500 watts, as you know, will be well over 100 amps. And so you want to keep the cable as short as you can. In any case, uh, so I'm going to turn this off here and we'll jump right to the electrical part. Okay, so we're going to look at some of the performance aspects of the uh, of the uh, pure sine inverter here. I've got the scope hooked up, but this uh, scope, unfortunately, I only have a, a 1X probe on it. But you can see, and I'll post a picture up on the screen here because I'm sure that's hard to see. Uh, the waveform is pretty clean. It's sinusoidal. It's definitely not a modified sine wave. Uh, but I can't see the peaks on it because, uh, you know, as you know, 120 volts AC, uh, RMS is about 240 volts, a little bit more than that peak to peak. And I've only got a 100-volt scale here, and I, and I can only turn it down 50 volts on the scale. So I can't quite see the top rounds it off. But in any case, uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to look fine there. Also, it's, uh, you know, um, putting out 121 volts on the meter here and uh, 120.7 there. So it just kind of rounds up. Uh, but anyway, it all looks pretty accurate. Nice blue display up here. It gives you a voltage in. Uh, the blue is there. You get a red if you overload it and it falls and shuts off. And uh, honestly, I've had this I've had this thing for about four years now. This light burned out, uh, and it went out, and I, and I called the company just to show you their customer support. Uh, they mailed me a new one free, and I stuck it in there. I haven't had a problem since, but it didn't last long. I'm sure uh, this is just the part they get and stick in there, but, uh, yeah, it didn't last very long. It burned out. Not that you really need that there, um, but it's just nice to have all that functioning. But in any case, uh, yeah, so I can turn the uh, heat up on this thing. Now, you'll see this voltage drop quite a bit. It's because I got these chintzy wires on here right now and dropping some voltage on that uh, but uh, the purpose of that was just to show you that sine wave still stays steady um, and put out 115 volts even with the diminished uh, input there so you can see this is running 11.1 .1 volts if I was to get this down to 10.5 it would trip it's got a low voltage 10.5 so if you draw your battery down if you're using lead acid it can get down there to 10.5 it will shut off ask me because I know it's done it um, this is a lithium battery it will shut itself off before it gets down there uh, but in any case, you can see it all works fine. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut the uh, shut this thing off. I'm going to take it apart and show you the internals. One of the reasons why I like this thing, besides having it for four years and it working flawlessly, except for the meter uh, going out there, <clears throat> um, I want to show you the internals on this thing, which I think are pretty good, uh, given what it is. 1500 watt pure sine inverter for about 175 bucks. I'm going to shut this uh, off here, shut it off there, and I'll come back to you when I got it apart. Okay, yeah, I've got the uh, got the cover off this thing. Basically, eight screws. There's four on the immediate top here and two on the sides that you have to take off. The cover lifts right off. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to show you uh, another reason why I like this particular inverter. Uh, it's got two outlets on the front. You can plug in your standard 15 amp, 110 volt AC plug in the front. Uh, I've already pointed out the meters and stuff while it was operating. So if you turn this thing around here, uh, you can see this very nice uh, all aluminum heat sink. There's one here and there's one on the other side, and you can see where all the FETs are bolted right to it. Uh, it's got dual fans. You'll see two fans in the rear, and it draws the air from the front to the back and pulls it right across that heat sink. And I know these heat sinks, uh, this has got a thermal brake. Uh, uh, it's grounded up here. It's got a thermal 
a thermistor up here. I do know that the uh, there's a fan that's cycled on and off with heat. And uh, you know, like I said before, I've had this particular unit about four years, and it definitely will uh, the fan will come on. Uh, you know, uh, especially when you're running a microwave, you're putting a good load on it. And I know it's uh, it's, it's good up to its full load. I put a like a microwave that's 1,100 watts on there, and uh, I actually started up a, a 15,000 uh, BTU uh, window air conditioner with this thing. I used to run it in my camper as well. Anyway, you can just see the quality of this thing. You know, if you look at the back here, there's two uh, heavy gauge wires coming off the ground and the positive, so they all appear to be appropriately sized. Oops, I got the colors on the wrong spot when I put these back on. I'll fix that. Anyway, going right down to the board, it's a nice PC board. It looks to be pretty heavy. Nice copper, uh, heavy copper traces going over to the appropriate areas on here. You can see the, the big traces coming up front of these FETs. Uh, and even on the back of the outlets here, if you look at the back, uh, you know, the soldering all looks clean, nice outlets, and, and again, a, a appropriate you know, gauge wire uh, for the amount of current being drawn. I don't see anything in here that's really uh, would alarm me. Uh, and again, from a quality perspective, I've had this thing four years uh, and not any problems with it other than this display. And, and all this uh, sloppy mess right here is stuff I put on there. I took the other meter out, I put this one in, put that around there just to kind of hold it in there well. But uh, yeah, this is after four years, um, and you can see uh, you know, this little board, it's got a fault, in, a fault circuit in here that lights up this uh, LED here if it faults, um, and all this you know, runs back onto the board here. So anyway, uh, I don't know what else I want to show you in here. I think the main point that I'm trying to make is it's got a good heat sink in it, uh, nice, appear to be high quality FETs, uh, and uh, all, the, all the wire in here is appropriately gauged on a nice... Uh, you know, uh, two, it looks like a two-layer heavy copper clad uh, PC board. So uh, if you're looking for a 1500 watt inverter uh, and you don't want to spend the money for one of the high-end ones and, and you do want a pure sign one that's got proper thermal protection, it has, uh, appears to have good uh, over uh, load protection and uh, just looks like a, a nice all-around uh, and so far been reliable uh, inverter, I, I, would, uh, I could recommend this one to you. So anyway, I'm going to shut this off here uh, and uh, come back to you later. All right, well, I'm going to end this video here. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, I'll have a few more reviews coming as I build this new camper uh, and uh, start to install the products that I bought for. I, I intend to not only show you how to install some of them, but uh, why I like them and why I chose them. I don't always go out and pay top dollar for the, the known best equipment, but I will try to find stuff that is, is good, of good quality at a reasonable price. And I, and I think this particular uh, pure sign inverter meets that criteria. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and found this thing useful. Uh, goodbye.